All right, so let's talk about how to do a polynomial fit to some data. Now remember, we're going to assume that we have some data, x0, y0, x1, y1, all the way to some xn, yn. Okay, so this is going to be our data set. And what we had looked at previously was how to do least square fit. Now we're going to do a polynomial fit so it actually goes through every single one of those points up there. One very simple way to uh, do a curve fit with this thing is to think about writing down a polynomial a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared all the way to a of n x of n. Right? So this is it's not a line, it's not a parabola, it's some general polynomial of nth degree. Now, how many unknowns are in this? Well, if I go up to nth degree, I have a1, a2, all the way to n plus a0. So there's n plus 1 unknowns. And notice in my data set, because I start with indexing at 0 all the way to n, there's n plus 1 constraints. In other words, I have to go through those data points. I have n plus 1 unknown, n plus 1 constraints. I can actually solve this with a linear system of equations. That's n plus 1 by n plus 1. How do I get those? Well, plug in each point. So notice p of x here, so I can look at the point x0, y0. At that point, this thing here is y0 is equal to a0 plus a1 x0 plus a2 x0 squared all the way up to a of n x0 n. There's one equation. And I can continue this process all the way down to the xn y of nth point, which will give me y of n is equal to a0 plus a1 x n plus all the way to a of n x of n to the n. So what I have here then is n plus 1 equations, n plus 1 unknowns, and I can solve this. I put it all together and I can solve it with just the backslash commands in MATLAB. Okay? So that's one way to do that. Right? It's a little bit cumbersome in the sense that I have to write all these equations down. And uh, for instance, if I added one more point to this, an n plus firm point, I'd have to redo this whole entire process. And so people have thought about this quite a while, before, especially before we had computers, and how to compute this in any kind of efficient uh, way. Okay? And let's just take a step back and think about two points. If I have two points, I could do a line fit. A line would go through both points, right? So the idea is that you say, all right, I want to calculate the equation of that line that's going to go through those two points. And we know the general form of a line is slope x plus b. So what I could do is plug this in first to here, then to there. It's a lot like what we did here, right? You just say, okay, at point x0, I have y0. So you get y0 equals mx0 plus b, and then you do the same thing. You get y1 equals mx1 plus b. So I have two equations, two unknowns, and I could solve. However, uh, that's sort of an amateur way to do it. Lagrange came up with a way, with these Lagrange polynomial coefficients, which is a much cleaner way to do this kind of uh, simple operation. And here's how he's going to represent that line between two points. And you'll see how clever it is once I write it down. The idea here is that I have two points, y0 and y1. So I have x0, x, I have x0 and x1 that goes through the values y0 and y1. And the construction of this is to say, okay, I want at one of the points, when I put an x naught here to get y, 
not out, and I want at the other point, when I put an x1, I get one, a y1 out. And so the way this constructed, it's, let me just write it down. You'll see how clever this is and how much sense, because now I don't have to solve a system of equations. I've already written it in a form that automatically satisfies what I want. So here is the Lagrange polynomial method for something as simple as a line. What does it say? Let's plug in some values. Suppose I put an x naught here. If I put an x naught here, then this becomes y naught. y naught equals y naught times x naught minus x1 over x naught minus x1. x naught minus x1 over x naught minus x1. This becomes 1. So I get y naught times 1. And notice what I put in here. If I put an x naught here, I get x naught minus x naught, which is 0. So in other words, if I put in here, x naught, then I get y naught on this side, I get y, uh, oops, one second here, is equal to y naught times 1, that's what this becomes, plus y1 times 0, which is, of course, y naught. Notice I didn't solve any 2 by 2 system of equations, I just wrote it in a very nice form. And if I put in x1, then what happens? Well, if I put in x1 here, p1 at x1 is y1. Now what happens to the rest of the terms? I get y0 times, I have here, x1 minus x1 is 0. So I get y0 times 0 plus y1 times, here put an x1, I get x1 minus x0, x1 minus x0, x1 minus x0 over x1 minus x0 is just 1. This one is y1. So notice, just by writing it in this clever way, I don't have to solve a 2 by 2 system of equations. I've written down the formula in such a way, it's still a line fit, but I've done it in such a way that I don't have to solve any system of equations for this. Okay? So this is the main idea behind Lagrange polynomials. And let's generalize that here in a second. 